Sarah leaned against the kitchen counter, her fingers drumming a restless rhythm on the marble service. I can't believe you're actually considering this, Jack. What choice do we have? He ran a hand through his disheveled hair, pacing the length of the room. The company's going under if we don't act fast. There's always a choice, Sarah insisted, her voice rising. We just need to think outside the box. Boom! What do you call that? It calls it something like today we are going to learn how to use dialogue tags effectively without distracting your reader. Now, dialogue tags are essential for keeping your reader anchored in a conversation, but if you're not careful, they can also be a major distraction. Yes, they are needed for clarity, but how you create that clarity is all part of the fun. Today, we're going to go over uh, uh, certain things uh, that allows us to talk about how to choose the right dialogue tags, why said isn't such a bad thing, and how to keep your writing flowing smoothly without overloading your reader. Now, if you notice, I didn't really use any dialogue tags in that opening beat, except for Sarah insisted. I'm just saying. Let's see. But Thomas, why are dialogue tags important? That's a great question. Let's answer it. Okay. Okay. All right. They serve a very uh, practical purpose uh, to let the reader know who the hell is talking. But they also need to be invisible. More often than not, the reader shouldn't even notice the tag. Their purpose is always going to be about clarifying who is speaking and conveying tone or emotion when necessary. Think of dialogue tags as the su support beams of a house. They're essential, but you don't want them to be the thing people notice. That's why using said or asked often is fine. I'm sure you hear that all the time, but we're going to we're going to talk a little more in depth about these things. Uh, they're also uh, said and ask are almost invisible to readers, but they do the job of grounding the conversation. They also help with beating, uh, creating beats uh, and pacing. All right. But does this mean you can't use exclaimed, murmured, or roared? Not at all. But learn when and where to use them. For example, for example, I am going to read and then I'm going to show. And then uh, basically, you'll get the idea. I can't believe you did that, Sarah exclaimed angrily. What was I supposed to do? Jack retorted defensively. Anything but that, Sarah roared furiously. You're overreacting, Jack said dismissively. Am I? Sarah asked. Yes, you are, Jack said. Well, I disagree, Sarah argued stubbornly with a murmured and exclamation. Pop it up there. All right. As you can see, every line literally has a dialogue tag. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but that was uh, difficult. That was that was a lot. That was crazy. That was crazy. Anyway, as you can see, though, too many unusual tags draw attention away from the dialogue itself. And worse, they can indeed interrupt the flow of the scene. So the trick is uh, basically knowing when to use more specific tags and when to let the dialogue speak for itself. Uh, you don't have some faith in your, uh, what do we call them? Readers. Walk through. Let's do it. Do, 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 do. What are we going to do today? Oh, step one. Choose when to use said and asked. Uh, I guess we should start with the basics here. So uh, most of the time, said and ask are indeed all you need. They keep things moving. Readers skim over them naturally, but that doesn't mean you can't get a little creative. Just that uh, it should be done sparingly, right? Let's see. Let's go to the machine. Let's delete this. Why not do it? I said, let's delete this. All right. He said, I'm not going, Sarah said. What? Why not? John asked. Now, this is pretty simple, as you can see. Uh, I'm going to make this a little, a little bit bigger for you. Eh, eh, yeah, look how big that is. All right. Uh, it's very simple, actually. Uh, but 
Uh, it might be too simple. Uh, but the dialogue itself tells you what's going on emotionally. So the tags just do their job, which is basically who the hell's talking. However, if I may recommend, if you find yourself uh, in a back and forth dialogue conversation, uh, it, it might distract from the movement and the pace. So uh, I might suggest doing this, right? So instead of I'm not going, Sarah said, maybe try Sarah lean against the counter, right? So basically what we did upstairs. Okay. I'm not going. And then uh, why not? John asked. So right now that's the only dialogue tag because we have now indicated who's talking so that we don't have to use Sarah's in this next one. And she goes, because the last time I went, I felt, I don't know, out of place around your friends. Right? We don't need Sarah's name there. This, so this example, oh, hey, e, this example basically is demonstrating uh, that you don't need tags for every line of dialogue. Uh, especially in two-person conversation. That's that's the advantage of two people uh, in a conversation. Uh, but as long as you establish who's speaking clearly on the outset, like we did, Sarah lean against the counter, I'm not going. Uh, why not, John asked. We know who's talking. We know who's there. Because the last time I went, I felt that we know that's Sarah. Um, so it's a good, it's a good balance of providing necessary information while allowing the dialogue to stand on its own. That's always important. Does the dialogue stand on its own? Uh, and as you can see, like I said, there's only one dialogue tag here and it allows the conversation just to keep going. All right. Number two, when to use descriptive dialogue tags, huh? Yeah, so you might be saying, but what about those moments when you need a little more emotion, Thomas? That's a great question. Maybe there's some tension or the characters are whispering, yelling, or panicking. What do we do? In those cases, using something other than said can be effective as long as it doesn't. As long as it doesn't uh, draw attention. That's the important part. As long as it doesn't. Uh, draw it to too much attention to itself. You, you never want anything to draw attention to itself um, because then it kind of takes you out of the moment. You sort of want to feel like you're involved in this conversation, hearing it instead of it just being like sort of like A, told to you or B, like it's playing out like a, a terrible stage play when it, indeed it should be a novel. And it's all about choosing what and where you use certain tags uh, that have a purpose. That's all. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Tags need a purpose. Well, you can't see me. I'm talking. I'm talking to the camera like you could see me. Tags, tags should have a purpose. That's it. All right. Let's go back to the example page. All right. So, with that, um, with that, you know, uh, what if we took the original? I'm just gonna take this. I'm gonna put this down here just so we can see the the evolution. Let's go. Okay. So, what if we want uh, to be really silly with it? Right, and we go, Thara. Let's use the whispered one. There, whispered. Right, and then let's be really funny. Growled. Growled. So that'd be, I'm not going. Why not? Right. See, the difference. Sure, again, it's simple, but the tags add that extra emotion to it. Um, I might not necessarily do this though. So that that's the thing. Like, do we need that? Right. Um, I think we need Sarah uh, whispered or murmured. And then you can have one. Speak up. Speak up. Actually, what? Why not? All right. So that kind of helps. You know, what? Why not? You don't need this growl. I might even, oh, wait, wait, Boop. I might change that to something like, you know, <gasps> what, John, closer to her, why not, 
All right. So there's no need for a secondary tag. But if we were going to take that top example, let's say we kind of like uh, bring this down. Okay. Let's say we play with this a little bit. So uh, we know she leaned uh, Sarah leaned against the counter. All right. She whispered. Uh, now we could change kind of the emotional truth of it. Um, why not? John, I don't have to do the what part, but John stepped closer, holding her hand, right? So what's the difference here? Right, right off the bat, uh, it has a little bit more empathy to it. Um, we don't have to have him say what, because his behavior is having him step closer. He didn't necessarily hear, you know, holding her closer, right? Uh, and then you could have our talk because the last time I went, maybe, maybe we'll stop it here. And we have her, uh, her pause filled the room. Oh, and then, uh, I felt, I, maybe, maybe we'll make her stutter a little bit. Right. You know, and give it a little bit more. Ha 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 ha. I, uh, I, I felt out of place around your friends. Those doombas, those goombas, right? Anyway, but there is a major difference between Sarah whispered and uh, she, uh, you know, Sarah said, right? But the purpose of she whispered influences the emotional behavior of the next line. He physically has to get closer to her because he knows he doesn't want her to strain herself, but she, he also recognizes there's some empathy that, uh, all right, something's affecting her. And then he wants to listen. He wants to know why. And then she pours. And then she says, I felt out. You know, maybe she's nervous. That's why she's, I, I felt out of place around your friends. So maybe she feels like if she says what's on her mind, it might, uh, might uh, cause an issue, you know. But this is where we get uh, to step three. Uh, before I, before I really get into step three, let me say this much. That's it. Now, uh, when you write out your dialogue, just get it out. I'm going to go over this a little bit more in the exercise, I believe. Uh, but, uh, but ultimately just, if you have to, he said, she said, he said, she said, they said, Bob said, Chris said, there was a lot of growling, some whispering, get it out. But now use step three to go through and eliminate unnecessary tags. Okay. So this is really uh, another key thing to remember. You 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 don't always need a dialogue tag at all. And just because you wrote it doesn't mean you have to keep it. So uh, sometimes the body language, as we as I showed with uh, her pores filled room or John stepped closer holding her hand, the body language or action can take its place and do even more to convey tone. But going through and eliminating unnecessary tags and adding these emotional action beats and keeping the flow of dialogue, you get movement both in pace and emotion. So this, this helps create like dynamic dialogue and movement. Um, let's, uh, let's say, Oh, let's take, uh, I'm going to take that intro that I did and I'm going to just build on the intro. So let me just go. Boop, boop. I'm going to copy. Boop, boop. Tan. Let's do 12. There we go. And, uh, oh, yeah. I, I like the, I like the right in the garama, garama, rom, rom, garam, rom, whatever. All right. Anyway, let's do this. I'm going to move this so you can see more. All right. So this is what I read in the beginning. Sarah leaned against the kitchen counter. Is that too small for you? Let me make it a little bit bigger. Boop, boop. It's not the size, you know. It's really how you use your words. All right. Sarah leaned against the kitchen counter, her fingers drumming a restless rhythm on the marble surface. I can't believe you're actually considering this, Jack. What choice do I have? He ran a hand through his disheveled hand, pacing the length of the room. The company's going under if we act, don't act fast. Ah. There's always a choice, Sarah insisted, her voice rising. We just need to think outside the box. Now, uh, I want to add a third person to this to show how to kind of do that. So let's get them into the room uh, from... I know from his uh, from his seat 
at the table. <laughs> there we go. Setting. Oh, I always like a Michael in my scene. Cleared his throat, which says a lot with no words. Okay. Both Sarah. Okay. And Jack. Uh, let's see. Turned to look at him having almost, I don't know, forgotten his presence. Eh? Eh? I like it. Okay. Now, I can't have Michael speak there because there is two forms of movement, even though it's one fluid movement, which is from his seat uh, at the table. Michael cleared his throat. <clears throat> Both Sarah and uh, Jack turned to look at him, having almost forgotten his presence. I actually, I would, uh, I would almost do this. It's two, it's two beats, but you can do this for just you know, uh, cleared his throat, calling both Sarah and Jack to turn to him, having almost forgotten his present. Uh, him calling both Sarah and Jack to turn. Uh, turn as so if had, I think that makes more sense. Forgotten his presence. All right, so from his seat at the table, Michael cleared his throat, calling both Sarah and Jack to turn as if they had forgotten his presence. All right, that's that's clear. Now I need him to say something. Mm -hmm. What can he say? Uh, what if uh, he began slowly? Uh, we approach, I don't know, uh, Henderson. Let's call him Henderson. That's a good name for a, guy, a person about a merger. Now, uh, maybe I should make that a question. So, uh, if you've watched this uh, channel before, you know, begin and start. I'll, I'll, I've said before, beginning and starting means to be stopped. But what if he began slowly uh, is representing that he's actually trying to think it out in real time. Uh, so it's like, what if uh, we approach Tenderson about a merger? Right. That's what that means. All right. Let's get uh, let's say Jack is like, what? Like, like he's huh? what? So let's do the quintessential Jack's. Jack's eyes widen. Henderson, <laughs> our biggest, our biggest. He's the biggest competitor. I don't even know how to spell competitor. Our biggest competitor. All right. Yeah, I want him to ask a question. I can't spell no. All right. And then we could have him, we could have, him, we could have Michael be a little cocky, you know, like, yo, yeah, exactly. You know, like precisely, you know, uh, how do you spell precisely? <laughs> Pre precise, precisely. Oh, just like that. Precisely. Anyway, Michael nodded. So he didn't say this isn't a dialogue tag yet. Uh, warming to his idea. They've been eyeing our client list Oh, yes. All right. I know I'm crazy. I'm a little tired. Okay. Two. What two? My kitty cat's being all kitty catty. Come on, two. Come on. She loves coming to see daddy. All right. So before I'm going to go a little further, I think. But uh, before I do, Sarah leaned against the kitchen counter. So we don't need a dialogue tag there. We, she says Jack's name, which means Jack is the next one talking. So we don't need a dialogue tag there, right? Then we know Sarah is the next in line because it's, uh, but we want, I wanted to add a little emotional emphasis. She insisted, her voice rising, there's always a choice. We, you know, there's always a choice, you know, like her voice is rising. We just need to think outside the box. Right. And then. <clears throat> so I know, baby. Right. Now, Michael clears his throat, which is the not a dialogue tag, but it indicates that Michael is the next one talking. What if 
he began slowly. We approached Henderson about the merger. So we know that's that's Michael. OK, it's inferred. We're allowing the uh, reader to, uh, you know, maybe play a little bit. We're trusting the reader. If I really wanted to, I go, what if Michael began slowly? I could do that, but it's really it is inferred. Uh, but Jack's eyes widen. So so far, there hasn't the only real dialogue tag I've used so far is Sarah insisted. OK, Sarah insists. I'll, I'll highlight that like that. OK, let's keep going. Let's keep going. We're almost done. Let's see. Uh, oh, I got it. OK, another another look, another action beat. So Sarah pushed. She pushed herself away from the counter. Her earlier agitation giving way to cautious. And yeah, now she's got a cautious interest. She's like, oh man. And uh in the let's see, uh, and you think they'd go for it? I know. Imagine she's like from New York like me, right? She'd go for it. Right? Okay. And then of course, all right. I think I think this is where I would use a dialogue tag. Um, because Jack's eyes widen. Henderson, our biggest competitor, and then Michael's like precisely, and then Sarah's like, huh? And you think you go for it? So we just want to clarify. Um, I should put that in quotes. It's worth a shot. So this is where I would go. Michael replied with a shrug. So I added a little bit more to that. All right, as you can see, and you know, Michael could have could have said, "It's worth a shot." Michael said uh shrugging but uh i like uh michael replied with a shrug okay we know it's michael i think we need him to say something else so uh better better than oh wait maybe i should spell it correctly better than selling off assets piece by piece isn't it <laughs> let's get jack back into the game jack stopped Pacing his gaze, his gaze darting between his two colleagues, 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 uh, colleagues. After a moment of slapjack, after a moment, a smile tugged at the corner of his mouth. I like it, Michael. You crafty devil, you. <laughs> I don't know if devil is capitalized. I think it is actually devil. Uh, like God, God would be capitalized if we were talking about God. But it, it yeah, because uh, if you're talking about God, it's capitalized. If you're talking about a God, it is not. Michael, you crafty devil. He's calling him the devil. I believe that. I believe that's capitalized. I. Uh, this is why I have editors. Anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you crafty little devil. It just might work. Just saying. We could we could do a little a little. Uh, let's do a spell check. Does it say? Yeah, whatever. Looks good to me. All right. Uh. Anyway. All right. Well, there you go. So. I I could keep going, you know, honestly, but uh, let's see. Uh, Sarah insisted. What else? Uh, Michael cleared his throat. He began slowly. I don't even think that that's the dialogue. Uh, Michael nodded. I don't even think that's a dialogue tag, really. Uh, Michael replied. Here we go. Boop. All right. So there you go. There's two dialogue tags. And it moves fluidly. I could have easily been like, I can't believe you're actually, like if I started up here, I could be like, I can't believe you actually considered this, Jack, Sarah said. What choice do we have? He replied. Uh, the company's going under if we don't act fast. There's always a choice, Sarah insisted. We just need to think outside the box. Uh, what if, Michael began slowly, we approached Henderson about a merger. Uh, Henderson, our biggest competitor, Jack asked. Precisely, Michael nodded. They've been eyeing our client. Oh, they've been eyeing our client list. Yeah, that makes sense. Our client list for years. Uh, and you think they'd go for it? Sarah asked. It's worth a shot, Michael replied. Better than selling off asset piece by piece, isn't it? Uh, 
Uh, Michael, you crafty devil. It just might work, Jack said. You see, like, it doesn't... Taking away the emotional beats, adding uh, dialogue tags, everything, it kind of, like, makes it feel weird. Weird. Anyway. All right, you want to do an exercise? Here's an exercise. Here's an exercise. Do you want to do an exercise? All right. It's your turn, basically. So take a piece of dialogue from your own writing. Feel free to. And uh, look at the tags you've used. And you have to think to yourself, can, can I replace a few of them with said or ask? Or can I eliminate any of them entirely and just add body language or action? Uh, basically, just try it out to help with the rhythm. But Thomas, how do I even write dialogue to get there? Okay. Uh, all right. Well, then. That's fair. Um, well, a great exercise is just getting the words out using dialogue tags, uh, helping, helping. So uh, I have this example that I did for the exercise. Okay. I used me. I rare, I like, uh, I don't always use my name, uh, but here we go. All right. Uh, I'm going to make this bigger, I guess. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. I need you to go back to the office and get the folders folder for us. Thomas said, but that's 30 minutes there and 30 minutes back, Chris said. Don't forget the time it'll get uh, it'll take to find the folder, Jessica mused. Jessica, such a nice lady. Yeah, that too, Chris agreed. Fine, call someone from the office and have them bring it, Thomas concluded. All right, so if you don't have dialogue or, uh, you know, you just want to practice, take this and see what you can do with it. Because now once you've basically written out something or written or took this, uh, that's very straightforward. Th uh, to be fair, this is, is sometimes how I write dialogue, where I just write it. I'll even do it like this. I'll go like this and I go, I need you to go back to the office and get the folder for us. I don't even do Thomas says, and then I go, Chris... Uh, but that's 30 minutes uh, there and 30 minutes back. I'd say Jessica, and then I just go, don't forget the time I take to find the folder. Now, <clears throat> you might be saying why. Uh, that's from my uh, uh, screen playing days. Um, it's just easier to sometimes just see the dialogue and just get it out. And then go back and create the emotional movement of the scene, which is what your next step would be: is to take the top part or a part that you make up, and just look at it and think about how you would adjust the above example and create more dynamics to it without overwhelming the dialogue with tags. And remember, if you're going to use tags, having those tags be purposeful. Um, now. I don't, uh, I won't do the whole thing, but in, uh, but maybe in the first line, I'll allow the Thomas character. Do you want me to do something with the Thomas character? All right, I'll do, I'll do one quick beat for this, right? So what I would do, let's just get the dialogue out of there. Do, 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 do. I just want you to know. Closing the briefcase. Huh? Brief. Did I spell that right? Briefcase. Thomas took a beat before glancing up at Chris. I need you to go back to the office and get the folders. Now, I don't need Thomas said. However, if I wanted to, this could just be I'm not going to do the whole thing, but this could just be dialogue without the tag. And the reason is, the reason is, is because closing the briefcase, Thomas took a beat before glancing up at Chris. I need you to go back to the office and get the folders for us. But that's 30 minutes there and 30 minutes back, right? So clearly, clearly, uh, you know, we know Chris is talking, so we don't even need it. Now, Jessica is the, is the third person, so you'd have to indicate her, and I would probably just do another action, or you can do 
you know, you know, you could do, she said. But again, your goal is like, how do we get the most out of the scene? How do we create the most purpose for it? And um, that's really what your goal is. So feel free to practice and play with that. But ultimately, I'm just saying, you know, I might do something playful with it. It's all it's all about trying things out, you know, really. That's really the goal. That's the goal in life. All right, let's, uh, okay, let's see. Eh. Final thought. All right. Dialogue tags are the unsung heroes of compelling narrative writing. When used skillfully, they blend seamlessly into your story, guiding readers through conversations without drawing attention to themselves. So let's recap on a few things. The power in simplicity is still there because said is not dead. So don't be afraid to use said as the go-to choice. Its simplicity is its strength, allowing readers to focus on the dialogue itself. Even more so, asked is equally effective for questions. Asked serves the same purpose as said, keeping the focus on the conversation. Now, when you want to add a little bit of flavor, said and ask uh, might not be the goal, but using the uh, strategic descriptive tags, purposeful, uh, be pur purposeful in the variety, be purposeful in your body language. Uh, more importantly, show sometimes tell will elevate any conversation instead of relying on adverbs. Uh, he said angrily, consider using action beats to convey emotion and create a more vivid scene. Body language is a beautiful thing. Anyway. Uh, at the end of the day, once you've written out the first or second draft of your conversation, the art of omission will be your savior. Less is more in many cases, especially in back and forth dialogues between two characters. Uh, you could ultimately omit tags entirely when it's just two people. Um, I would recommend adding some action beats, though, some emotional movement, you know, but trust your readers to follow the conversation. And if you find yourself using dialogue tags to add clar clarity, clarity clear to clarify uh you are always allowed to use action beats actions do speak louder than words i don't just mean that i stand by it no pun intended <laughs> stand by it okay uh listen i just write them i uh, I, I don't qualify them uh replace your tags with character actions to add depth to your scene while still indicating who's speaking but you got to remember mastering dialogue tags is a process it's about finding the right balance between providing clarity uh, for your readers and meaningful uh, narrative flow of the conversation. Uh, as you practice and refine your techniques, you'll develop an instinct for when to use dialogue, when to omit them, and how to use them most effectively. It only comes with practice. You got to do it. You got you got to fail to succeed. You got to you got to write crap to get good. Because all great writing is a rewriting. And ultimately, your goal should be to make your dialogue so engaging uh, and your character so distinct that readers become fully immersed in the conversation, barely noticing the tags that guided them. Uh, because when used well, dialogue tags become invisible facilitators of your story. However, sorry about that. I was having technical difficulties. I was just ending. Uh, let me just uh, basically. Uh, you know, with practice, you'll discover it because uh, all great writing is rewriting. However, as you practice and refine your technique, you'll develop uh, instincts for when to where and when to use them effectively. But your goal should be to make your dialogue so engaging that people are like, I know who these people are. So basically keep doing what you're doing and make things happen. All right. Next uh, video in this series. Boom. Uh, the next video in the rules of writing series, uh, will be about create a balance between moments of high tension and moments of relief or relaxation to maintain reader engagement. Uh, like what you saw today. Yay. If you, uh, like what you saw, but you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. And of course, if uh, you found this uh, helpful, give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel grow. 
uh, with that said, I guess that's everything, right? So, as always, peace and harmony, truth and action, and keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Bye.